So what are five things in the world of cloud computing that people think are true, but actually are not? Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Cloud Insider YouTube channel. My name is Dave Lenthicum, author, speaker, B-List Geek, and here to tell you the truth about cloud computing and the utilization of generative AI. Let's get going. So this one uh, was actually one I thought I did, uh, but I didn't do that. I looked back in the videos. I thought I did a myth uh, video. I did not. And someone reminded me in the comments that they wanted to see it. So I decided to do this. And what I did here is list 25 myths that people kind of uh, hold that in cloud computing that are truthful, that are actually not. And I narrowed it down to the five of the most common that I deal with typically on a weekly basis. And I thought it's a good idea to go through them here to tell you what's correct and what's not in terms of the facts around cloud computing. So let's get started. So the first myth and one I hear a great deal is public cloud cannot meet specific compliance requirements. So the reality is much different. You have to remember that public cloud providers understand their market and they know they need to support uh, compliance regulations, laws like GDPR, HIPAA, uh, uh, SOC 2, um, Sarbanes-Oxley, all those sorts of things. And they also understand that they're going to be audited as part of compliance with these regulations. So they put the processes in place and the mechanisms in place to adhere to these uh, regulations. So they're pretty good at it. So you're not going to give things up by putting things in the cloud in terms of your compliance issues. And I hear this all the time as a, uh, you know, something that's misunderstood. So people will tell me, well, we can't put uh, our data in the cloud because of HIPAA regulations or because of GDPR. Um, that's almost never true. In fact, the compliance infrastructure that the public cloud providers provide are normally going to provide you a leg up in you leveraging this technology. So in other words, they're going to make it easier for you to comply with the law because of the processes and the mechanisms that are built into public cloud providers. They're going to charge you money to use them. And there's a cost uh, uh, issue here that we need to consider. But normally, they're going to make compliance easier, not worse. So another myth that I hear a great deal uh, and I heard this week, in fact, is that you lose ownership of your data in the cloud. Cloud service agreements usually specify that the customer retains ownership of the data. And so if you put information that's your information, your business data, things like that in the cloud, you still retain ownership of the data. The cloud doesn't take uh, ownership of the information. Normally, they're not culling through it. It's encrypted. They can't see it. Uh, so there's not a lot of risk that you're going to put information in the cloud where you're gonna lose ownership of that information or that the cloud providers or other parties are going to start calling through that information. And I understand the concern there because you're putting it on infrastructure that you don't own. Um, but the reality is that uh, cloud providers basically act as if they're your private hardware device that sits on a public cloud provider. And so you should treat it as such. So the third myth and one I hear a great deal is that cloud services automatically scale without planning. So in other words, they, they'll throw something on the cloud and they'll assume that the scalability of it, its ability to allocate servers and uh, scale to whatever needs of the uh, processing loads that are there are going to be automatically built into the systems. It does have auto scaling capabilities, but you have to plan these things. So it requires strategic planning and management need to understand the mechanics of uh, you know things like vertical scale, uh, scaling, adding resources uh, to exist, existing servers or horizontal scaling, adding more servers. And you need to configure this. This is something that the cloud providers normally don't do on your behalf. And if you're configuring something for auto scaling, that needs to be configured as well because you can only scale up to a certain number of uh, resources that are you provisioned that you're paying for. Uh, so. The reality is, is it's very much like scaling with your on-premise systems, on-premises systems, only the fact is you don't, uh, uh, you, you don't see them, you don't physically own them. Uh, so they exist on a, on a public cloud provider, but the mechanisms are the same. So you still have to do architecture, you still have to do planning, you still have to think in terms of how you're going to deal with scaling, you know, both horizontally and vertically, and that becomes your responsibility and continues to be your responsibility. So don't make that mistake. The cloud doesn't do that automatically for you. 
So another myth that I hear a lot is the cloud is always cheaper than on-premises uh, systems or ser servers that you own. Uh, almost never. Uh, and so uh, what I tell people is you may have come to cloud for the cost savings, but you're going to stay for the agility and, a, and, and strategic value of leveraging the cloud. And sometimes if you've come to the cloud for cost savings, you're going to find that in many cases, that's not going to be there. And so if you're looking at the repatriation movement that's going on right now, where people are taking things from public cloud providers and putting them back on premises, they're doing so because of the cost. In other words, they didn't realize how much it would cost them to run their workloads on a public cloud provider. And they don't have the budget or the ability to modernize those workloads. So they're going to run more efficiently. So they're going to uh, burn less uh, money. So they push them back on premises. And I think that's going to be a reaction that we're going to see a lot of time. So the cloud is normally going to be, uh, generally speaking, more expensive than on-premises solutions because the cost of hardware uh, in data center spaces dropped tremendously in the last 10 years. So this probably wasn't the case you know, 10, 15 years ago when the cloud was first being introduced because it was very expensive to own a data center and to maintain hardware in a data center. Now that cost is normalized where it's very uh, cost effective to own your own hardware. And so that's competing and throws a monkey wrench in the whole cloud computing business case. But it's not always cheaper than on-premises solutions. And indeed, it's probably more expensive uh, in, in, in many of the cases that I see. So take that with a grain of salt and do your own math, do your own architecture, do your own configuration, put your own FinOps programs in place to make sure you're understanding the value that cloud-based solutions and on-premises-based solutions are bringing to you. So the final myth, and one we've uh, dealt with with another video, and I'll go ahead and post it up here, is cloud computing is inherently less secure than on-premises. So the reality is much different, and the reason behind the reality, I think, is interesting as well. So cloud computing systems are normally going to be more secure if you configure them properly. In other words, if you do the right planning around them, things like that. And the reason for that is that most of the R&D dollars around building and deploying security solutions have been spent on cloud-based solutions, so spent on public cloud-based platforms. So whether you're buying a third-party solution or renting a third-party solution or leveraging a security system that's native to a particular cloud provider, you're going to find that normally it's going to be uh, more effective. It's going to be more modern. It's going to be more innovative in their ability to approach security than things that you normally find with some of the on-premises stuff. And so that's just the reality of where the money is being spent. So the focus has been on the last 10 years on enhancing and, and doing innovative things on public cloud providers, not necessarily with the on-premises systems. That's where the investments have been made. Therefore, all things uh, being equal, normally cloud-based systems, public cloud-based systems uh, can be and will be more secure uh, than on-premises systems uh, if you do the same type of planning and the same type of uh, utilization of resources. That's just the reality of it, reality of how the market adjusted the innovation spending and where the money is being spent. And for the security solutions, most of it's being spent on public cloud solutions. Well, that's all I have for you this week. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, don't forget to check out my uh, blog on InfoWorld. Also, my LinkedIn learning courses. I have about 72 out there. And, uh, you know, go take them. Give me feedback. Let me know uh, how it's going for you. And also, don't forget about my generative AI architecture course out on Go Cloud Careers. That's a long form mentored course. I'm spending uh, you know, four hours online with the students there to talk through the issues of building and deploying generative AI systems. I'm finding that in in incredibly fun and I think you think you, you will as well. Also, don't forget to follow me on LinkedIn and I'll see you next time. You guys take care. Cheers.